Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher, and today is January 14th. I cannot believe we're already to the 14th. I feel like I say that every time I record a video. The time goes by so quickly. Um, but thank you guys so much for stopping by to see what I've been working on. Welcome back to those who are returning and welcome to those of you who are new. I have seen many comments saying I'm new. This is the first time I'm finding you. Thank you guys so much for checking my channel out. And if of course you see things that you like or you want to be updated on when I have a new video, be sure to click the subscribe button as well as you can click the bell to be notified when I have a new video. And in the coming weeks and months, I will be having extra videos popping up here and there, not giving any time promising, but I will have extra videos popping up. So to be notified when I have irregular times, um, go ahead and hit the bell to make sure that you're notified when I have a new video. And of course, today is a different time than I normally record. I was going to record on Friday and then with going out of town on this coming Friday to go to Michigan, and my I just needed to get things done instead of recording Friday. So I am here. I am really excited tonight to record. I have a finish to show you. Um, along with all kinds of other fun things. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing I wanna do is today, when I was on Instagram, I saw that Tara, who is Sully1040 on Instagram, but I believe she said in her new video that she is going to be switching her Instagram to also be Sully Stitches. And I'll link her floss tube below. She previously had recorded some videos with LaDonna from Sampling of Memories, um, and they haven't recorded in a long time. And with encouragement from friends, and I didn't talk to her, but I'm getting all this from her video, she started a channel. She has so many pretty pieces. So go check her out. It's Tara, and her channel is Sully Stitches. So she just uh, posted her first video today and I've already watched it um, and I'm excited for the next one. We stitch a lot of the same things and things she likes, I like the same thing. So it's, um, it's fun to watch someone else's videos that has similarities to you. Um, I also, in talking about her channel, wanted to, I went through on the mentions um, on my channel to who had mentioned me in theirs. And I've watched most all of these, um, but I wanted to mention them also. Um, and some of them were because I had said something about them, but I just wanted to shout them out too. So the first one is the two base stitchers and they are in Canada, I believe, uh, their channel. And they have a fairly recent video. Um, the Red Cross Stitcher, and one of her pieces she was debating on, I don't know if she started it, was she was going to be stitching um, Christmas Rules by Primrose Cottage using similar style to how I did mine on the black Lugana with the bright colors. Um, and that's one of my favorite pieces I've done. Uh, the Pink Stitchers, they're so fun to watch. Britches Get Stitches mentioned me. Um, Cross Stitch the Globe the Camping Stitcher, and the Sassy Southern Stitchers, along with Nicole Spore and Jody Simply Stitching Ocala. So go and check them out, and I'll put all of them below, and then as I'm talking, I will put I will have put them um, underneath so you can see what the they are in case you, I talk too fast. Um, but speaking of the Camping Stitcher, Chris, she has a new valentine pattern out and i will link her etsy shop below so go and check check that out um it's really really cute i didn't print it out i um and i i don't even know if i bought it yet but i am going to be purchasing it um but it's really cute actually i'll put it right here um so that you can see what it looks like 
but that is on my to purchase list. It's not necessarily, I don't think I'm going to stitch it this year um, just because of my plan I have going on, but I'm definitely going to buy it. Um, all right, let's move to my finishes. The first piece I want to share with you is this is a previous finish and it's still not completely finished. I was looking through my things, trying to pick from my 24 starts and other Brenda Gervais pieces, oh, some of my Brenda Gervais whips to stitch on some Valentines. I have not decorated for Valentine's Day yet. I am st I put my Christmas away and then I put out some winter things. So I have yet to pull out my all my Valentine's items, but this was in my craft room. I knew I had finished it halfway. <laughs> so I sewed this piece into a pillow, but I have not fully stuffed it yet. So this is on my list to stuff and get ready to go in the dough bowl. But this is from last year. This is, I believe it's called Always. It is a free chart from Hello from Liz Matthews. And I stitched this last year. This is a piece of, I'm, I do not know the count. It was a piece of linen that I hand dyed myself with some writ dye. And the floss, I want to say is Brother in Blue from Gentle Arts. And I stitched it. And then on the back, I finished it with some, it's velvet from the Velveteen from Lady.Creates, but I don't remember the color. And I did buy some of the silk ribbon to attach to the sides and tie up at the top. So I need to stuff this and then I need to sew the bottom and I'm debating to put any type of trim or I'm just going to attach the ribbon. I'm not sure, but I want to get this fully finished. If you have not stitched this before, it's super quick and easy. Um, and like I said, it's a free chart on the Hello from Liz Matthews website and I will put it, I'll put a link below to her website. She also has other, not necessarily Valentine's free charts, but she has other free charts on her website. So you can check those out. And this is my big finish. I started on January 1st, my blessing sampler, and I finished it last night. So January 13th. I stitched on it from the 1st to the 13th for a total of 10 days, and I was bound and determined to get this done before I went on my trip to Michigan to, to see Chantel and Nicole, just for the fact that I wanted to be able to feel like I could stitch on whatever pieces I wanted to, um, and I didn't want to have this, like, I need to finish this. I am not regretting that I did it and I'm glad I challenged myself to challenged myself again this year to stitch um a sampler or any piece really in the month of January but it was it felt really good to get it done last night. So, without further ado, this is the Needleworker sampler by Brenda Gervais. I stitched this on 36 count tea leaves by color and cotton. I used the called for colors with the exception of the letters and the words. So all of this dark color is deep forest by gentle arts, the house and all of the places where you see the darker red, that is all cherry cobbler by classic color works. The inside pieces where it's this lighter pink, those are Wood Rose by Gentle Arts. And then the pink flowers on the outside are Tennessee Red Clay by Classic Color Works. The reds and the pinks were called for in the chart were Valdani, and I didn't have those. And I also had seen on 
Tina Egner, who is Team Egner on Instagram. She had changed her words to using Deep Forest and her house was Cherry Cobbler. And I'm not sure if she used the Valdani for the others, but I just kind of went with changing those. But the house and the words were definitely an inspiration from her. And I will just show this. And I am not sure if I am going to frame this traditionally or if I want to mount it onto a board like a using foam core and then um, mount it like on the front of something. I have a couple ideas, but I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with, but I am excited to get this fully finished and put up to display. Um, I have a few other pieces I want to also complete and have together. So I'm excited. And like I said, I'm excited to have this done and I'm ready for the next thing. So that was one of my starts in um, January or on January 1st to complete. And that was part of my 20, it was one of my 24 and 24 pieces is what I wanted to say. The next thing that I wanted to share with you was my book of days. So since I've been here last, I had bought the book of days. I had spiral bound it, um, but I had not done anything to the inside. And since then I have posted a short on here as well as I posted a, um, a reel on Instagram. So you might've seen some of it, but I wanted to share a little bit what I did and then how I'm using it. So first, this was the cover of the Book of Days. And all I, I did when I had it bound, I had the clear plastic put on it. Um, so all I did was I took a piece of scrapbook paper and I stuck it right to the front of the planner just to change what the front of it looked like so it didn't look the same. So I just simply put it right on the front cover. So now I have a customized front cover. And that was my favorite piece from the pack of paper I had. I also, this pack of paper was something that my husband had got me for my birthday last year. Um, and so I had the whole stack of it and I thought, well, this is, it has some type of a memory and it's a perfect, it had lots of different prints so I could pick and choose and it would all go together. I did then customize some of the pages with some other color washi tape and some stickers. So as the months go by, you'll see that they're a little bit more customized um, because all the paper is the same. It's all bright um, colors. So this is my January. So what I did was I, I was inspired by Kia from Kia B to tear my paper. And she did the same where she tore it and then she has a piece here and going across the top. She had different word or she might have just had letters to make spell out January. But these are some stickers that I had gotten from um, Hobby Lobby. And I actually had that from last year when I was doing um, a different planner. And so I had that. Then these, which this was enough, all of this was inspired ideas from Kia. So I'm not taking credit at all for this. But she had some envelopes with letter or like little things on her pages. And I found these at Hobby Lobby. And this is what they are. They're Tim Holtz um, file cards. And I took out the envelope part and then I took out the little thing that looks like the top of a file folder. I glued it down separately and then I used some washi tape to decorate it. And then this is going to go in here and it's on each page. Now it does make it a little bit bulky, but I'm okay with that because this is my only planner and I'm going to keep everything in here, all my information. So on these little cards, I decided to make this my stat card for the month. So I will put 
all whatever stats I want that has to do with my cross stitching. So the first thing I put on here was finishes. So in the month of January, I finished Needleworker Sampler. And then I also wrote that it took me 10 days because that just for my own information, I wanna keep track of that better this year. So if I was to pick something else up, I would know roughly this is how long it would potentially take me to finish it if I was trying to finish something in a similar size, like for a retreat or whatever it happened, or if I was doing any type of pre-stitching um, just to help myself. Um, I also, as every day, I am challenging myself to write down what I stitched on. So I wrote that I started Needlework or Sampler. I am using the hashtag SYS24 and 24, and then what the fabric was. And the fabric in here is something, an idea I got from Sherry, who is Colorado Cross Stitcher. She writes that down in her book of days, and I thought that was a great idea. So I have a backup place to look for that. I do write in my um, bags, I at the very least have a card that tells me the fabric. I don't write a whole bunch of other information on the card, but I want to always be able to know what fabric I used and provide that information when I do my floss tube. Um, then again, I started on the second, Winter Berries and Pine. Then I also wrote when I recorded my floss tube. I did a Book of Days short. Um, on the sixth, I had a stitching meetup with my friends. So I just, I'm trying to write, I did a Zoom on the ninth with my friends. So I'm just trying to write anything that has to do with stitching that I want to remember I'm writing it down in here so I can go back and check that out. And I'll go through a couple months. This is what February looks like. And I went ahead and did all of the months with the paper and the everything so I would be ready as the months came and I wouldn't have to go back and every month put stuff on there. I also found some birthday stickers so where I have birthdays in my family, I put some little stickers on there. Let me go to a month that had some other stickers too. Let's see. Oh, 4th of July. So my paper is not 4th of July, but I put a few like patriotic stickers. So I just wanted to make, I think I did that on, um, let's see. October, I put a couple pumpkin stickers. And as I get other things, I'll put them in there as well. And then I had, which I haven't written anything here, I had added in a few extra pages. I think I did five pages. So I only decorated one of them. I am pretty sure I'm going to write all my finishes here along with taking a picture using the... HP Sprocket, which I have, and I have used it a little bit. I did not use it as much as I wanted last year, but I do want to take a picture of all my finishes and put them in the back of here. So at the end of the year, this whole thing will be filled with my stitching of what I did this year, and I can have a record of all of it in one place. So that was my solution to having all the different things <laughs> is I don't have enough time to have multiple books. I have figured out I need one book for just the stitching and I'm keeping this right next to my spot. So every night when I stitch, I can, if I stitched on stuff earlier in the day, something different, I can write that down too. But I know to write what I did in here. So I'm really loving that, but I, I wanted to share that. So on that note, I wanted to share my whips with you. So one of the things that I worked on was Dwelling Place. And this was a whip 
which it, um, I started this when it came out last year. I think it was in September or October it came out. I don't remember now. Because that was another thing is I kind of wrote stuff down. I kind of didn't like when I started this stuff. And there's nothing wrong if you don't keep track. But I, I really wanted to try to keep track to see how long things are taking me. Um, only for pure personal <laughs> reasons. Um, so I started this. I had a little start. I put it down. It's such a big piece that I decided to, um, after watching Chrissy from, Christy from Crosshatch Quilts, um, and then my friend Carol Crago and Yvette, a whole group of them are doing this as a um, stitch along. And they have divided it up into, I think it's 24, one, two, three, four, five, 20 boxes, I think. Yeah, 20 boxes. So 20 months. I am kind of following, kind of not. I I fell behind because they started in October. So I'm trying to catch up to then be able to stitch each month. But for right now, I'm just trying to put in some stitches. So I got the urge to stitch on it last Sunday. And I am... I was really happy with what I got done. I was having a lot of fun doing it. And this is on 36 Count Toasted Malo by Number 12 Stitch Co. And what I was able to get done was I was able to come across, let me hold this up. I was able to come across the whole top border so I had like a little bit of this like over here. So I was able to go all the way across. So this is the whole width of the sampler. So as you can see, it's big. This is a fat half of fabric. And then I was able, oh, sorry, to finish stitching the top alphabet, the top line. And on either side of the alphabet is a bird. So that's kind of my next, step is to do the bird over here and the bird over here and then I'll do the there's another line of alphabet and a little bit here and then start filling in the border at the top and if I can get this top part done in the next month or so so maybe stitch a little more on it this month and a little bit next month I feel like I'll be good and then I mean obviously keep going but I think I'm just I'm Am I working with them, but then kind of doing it at my own pace too. So, so, so pretty. And again, this is Dwelling Place by Teresa Kogut, and it's the big sampler. And if you didn't want to do the big sampler in this book, she also has all three of these. She has a Boscornu, she has a little pin pillow that says home, and then she has the flower bouquet, which is also really pretty. The colors are gorgeous. They are definitely reminiscent of patriotic key kind of, but then also just like an everyday palette. I love the colors, which is really what drew me and then the house and the stars and all of it. So I, I really like this piece. But again, like I said, it's very large and I'm not anticipating it getting done super quickly and I'm okay with that, but I am excited that I have it downstairs in my basket and I'm planning to work on it a little bit each month. So that is the first one. And then the other thing I worked on besides the blessing sampler was winter berries and pine and I think that I'm at the same place that I was but I just wanted to show this again because this is what I'm planning to to work on um tonight along with like just try to work on it till it's finished um this is the chart it was an exclusive it is an exclusive from Brenda Gervais website country stitches 
I believe it is sold out now. Um, but I got it. You had to buy it as a kit and I got the kit. So this is where I am. There is not a whole lot more to do it, to get it done. Fill in the pumpkin, or not the pumpkin, fill in the snowman. She has another one that's a pumpkin head. <laughs> fill in the snowman head and then all of this up here. And a lot of the top stuff is over one, which is what, I mean, I wanted to get the blessing sampler done, but also has kind of stalled me. I'm going to do it, it'll be fine. But at this point, I just wanna get, just finish it so that I don't have a whole lot of these small pieces unfinished. And on Saturday night, I was Zooming with a few friends and we were talking about this. Um, just not like, I have a lot of these littles that I am about this far done. If I sat for a day or two, I could get this done. So my goal in trying to get things finished, whether it's a new start, like this was a new start for my 24 and 24, or if I'm picking up a whip, trying not to leave the little things unfinished and just power through them. Realistically, how I stitch, I could stitch them in three, maybe four days. Um, but a lot of times what happens is I get distracted and I am moving on to the next thing and I'm trying really hard to focus and get the smaller things done. Um, because I started it in order to put it out to, to look at it. So I don't wanna have a bunch of little pieces that I start and don't finish. So that is um, my other whip that I worked on and then I finished Needleworker Sampler. I think that is the least amount of whips and things I have ever worked on in a floss tube. So this is gonna be an interesting year. I will have stuff to show, but it's going to be different than um, the normal, I think, but I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about before I showed you the um, couple whips that I pulled out of my basket that I, they're not Brenda Gervais whips, they're other whips that I had that I had previously pulled out and said, I would like to either work on these to finish them this year or work on them to put a decent amount of stitching in on in on them. So before that, I wanted to share with you, if you bought the, or if you get Just Cross Stitch Magazine or you've gotten this issue, um, in December, I was contacted by uh, Just Cross Stitch, Barbie, to, who is the editor, to let me know that they were writing an article about floss tube and they wanted to include my floss tube channel in there on the, in this article and they wanted to send me a copy. And I was so honored and felt so um, special to be included in this. And the group that I am included with on uh, this page, I, I love all of their channels as well um, and talk about them a lot. So this is the article specifically um, in, and it talks about floss tube and how it has reshaped cross stitch and Barbie who is the editor she actually wrote the article and I met her when I was at StitchCon. So down here it tells some floss tubes to be watching. Of course mine is on there. Salt box stitcher, just keep stitching, Elizabeth Ankin stitch and Colorado cross stitcher. So um, I know Elizabeth Ann she already mentioned this on her video and then with it um, Chantelle, she wrote an article about finishing and then she had finished, if you can see, this chart by Erin Elizabeth is in the magazine and then she provides the finishing and you can buy that from, you can, the chart is in here and you can buy the finishing board from Chantelle on her website. Um, so this is a great, and also in this magazine, which they sent this to me, let me go to the back. There was a couple other really great charts in here. Let me see. There was another one 
Um, there's like a, oh, Ray Nile is also, that was who? Mm. Ray Nile from um, Red Barn Sampler. She has this in there. So I just, I thought it was really fun to look through the magazine and see what new things were in this magazine. So again, if you get this, um, check it out. And I am honored and excited to be featured in this. So thank you to the Just Cross Stitch. All right, I, the things I pulled out to work on. I have, and this is a bag from Barry from Stitch Vault. And it's the happy birthday, or the birthday girl. And I have my birthday start from September in here. And this was a piece that I, it was one of my, um, one of my unicorn charts. And I said, I want to get this done before September, my next birthday. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and pull this out. It has already um, some pinks in here. So I thought, well, this is fun for, it's getting to be Valentine's stitching, uh, pinks and reds, and I am all for the pinks and reds. So I thought, well, this is really fun to be working on. And I was going to do the house yellow, but I since have decided I'm going to do it in a light pink. So, and blushing beauty to be specific. Specific. I have a teeny tiny start. This was from my birthday um, on this up in the border. And these are the colors that I'm going to be using. This is 36 count sugar cookie by color and cotton. So I just had started the border a little bit and then um, I'm glad I didn't get very far because I'm excited about making the house pink. Pink is my favorite color and so I thought well that would be really fun. So this is one of the whips I pulled out to get working on. Potentially I will switch back and forth and then work on this until it gets finished, but we will see how that goes. I don't know. I don't really have a plan with the whips except for to pull them out and work on them. And if I can get them done, that is really ideally the goal. But if I just work on them some and then put them away, we'll see. Um, all right, this is the next one. Again, I tried to pull things that were flowery pink kind of in the Valentine's theme. This is a little bit of spring. This was a kit from Dying to Stitch. And it was the first kit in their, um, I forget what their club is called, but um, it was the first one in this series from last year. So if Alma is going to release this a year later. It will be soon, um, but I love this. So that's another one. I don't, let's see where I am on that one. I have some of the top, I just have like the outline of the top border done. And I got, I stitched the side border, oops, so I could get down to the flower and like work on some of this so I wasn't stuck just working on the alphabet at the top. So I would like to put in some work on that. And I was trying to pull things out too um, to decide what to take with me on my trip to Michigan on Friday. So I probably will take a couple of these um, or maybe just take one of them and focus on it. I am also thinking of take, I have one new start, which I'll show you in a minute, um, but I'm, I might take a couple of the starts that I wanna start in February with my 20, 24 and 24 just to get them started, but we'll see what I end up with. I haven't gotten that far but I also pulled out floral motif sampler. I have seen Annie, the proper stitcher. She's almost done. 
and other people working on this. Elizabeth Ann is working on it. Um, this is one that I'm not very far, but I would love to have this done by the end of the year. I don't know if it's possible. This is on 36 count prairie grass by Seraphim, which is the call for is 40 count. So I have a long way to go, but if I do a little bit each month, maybe we'll see. Again, like I said, the whips, I'm not making any promises. And even the starts, the only thing I, I want to do is get them started. If I could get all the Brenda Gervais pieces done, that would be amazing. But I really don't see that happening. Um, because I still have a pile of Brenda Gervais whips that I need to share with you guys that I also want to be pulling from. So, have so many fun things and I'm... I'm just loving pulling the pieces out, looking at them, whether they're the starts or they're the my whips. Um, I'm really motivated to get some of them done. All right, so that's what I am going to be working on probably for the rest of the month. So first, I want to finish winter berries and pine, um, and then I'd like to work on those whips. I also might pull out from my 24 and or my 12 by 12, I started Winter Quaker by Primrose Cottage and I might pull that out and try to finish that, uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So stay tuned and we'll see if I pull that out by the end of the month, um, but if not, I'll get that out at another time. All right, let's move on to my haul. All right, over the past week, I think it's, it seems like a lot of stuff for a week, but I think some of the things I had ordered and they just happened to have come in the past week. Um, two of them are were PDFs. Emily Call released at the beginning of, or January 8th actually, so last Monday, she released a few Valentine's patterns, and I could not resist buying these. The first one that I bought was Heart and Key. She is going to be the designer at the Beach Please Retreat, which is in February, hosted by Thread the Needle Stitchery, uh, Stacy and her husband Brian. And I, I love all things Emily Call, and this was my absolute favorite, Letters of Love, and. I haven't done anything yet, but this is the piece that has tempted me so much to start something besides the Brenda Gervais pieces I said I was going to start. I don't know if I am or not, but potentially I might start this using the colors from Brenda Gervais Love Notes. I haven't fully decided, but or I might kit it and start it at the retreat. I don't know, but I I don't know what it is about this piece. I absolutely love it. So those were the two I bought. She had a few other releases as well. Um, so go check out her Etsy shop um, for lots of fun, all the season charts. And she already has a ton and she still keeps coming out with cute, cute seasonal pieces. I feel like she's working on some non-seasonal things um, too, but don't hold me to that. Uh, I know she has lots of ideas. She is a graphic designer by trade, I believe, and then got, got into this. Um, so go check out Emily Call if you haven't already, but I've talked about her before, so you probably have <laughs> if you watch me. I also bought a few, a couple, I found these on, I don't even remember the shop now and I feel bad, um, on Etsy. There are some Brenda Gervais ones I didn't have. This is Live Simply. And I'm not gonna start these, I'm just adding them to my Brenda Gervais library. Um, three tulips. and Heart of the Home Sampler. 
So I was glad to get those, to add those to my library, like I said, of Brenda Gervais pieces. I also purchased, I have wanted this bag for a long time and there was, I think she was having a, a sale or I, I went looking for something else. This is from Dot Dot Goose Denise. I just think this bag is so cute. And I think she has a couple more of these. She also has some new bags in her shop if they're still there because they're so cute. Uh, Valentine's ones. So if you're in the market, Denise from Dot Dot Goose, she, I think she was the first project bags I ever bought. Um, and I have a decent amount of her bags. <laughs> but like I said, I just love this bag. So I need to find something to put in it. Then this I bought from Blue Ribbon Designs. I don't, maybe I showed this last week. I don't remember. I love this. I think I did. So this isn't new. I just, I had my Needleworker sampler in it and I wanted to show it again. Um, this is from Patchworks and Poppy Haberdashery on, that's her website. It was Jenny Stitching, I think. Um, this is one of her bags and look at this zipper pull. It's so pretty. This was a pre-order, so there aren't any more of this bag, but she does have another pre-order for a blue patchwork bag, and it may or may not have happened into my cart, but what I love about her bags are they're really tall, so they fit a big chart, and then they have this little bit of a gusset at the bottom so that they fit a lot of stuff in them, so this is a really good bag. If you're looking for something larger, and of course it's, I mean, it's sewn so beautifully. Also on the notions of bags, and this is what I think I'm going to be taking with me um, to hold notions and maybe some projects. I, I haven't packed my bag yet, but I bought this from Rock Baby Scissors. This is a mini um, place for everything bag. So cute with Tula Pink and Rock Baby Scissors is who I bought it from. And you open it up. And this one did not come with the pages on the inside. So I did order a page. I'm waiting for that to come. And this is what the inside looks like. And I have the larger one already. But you use this and you snap the pages on the inside. And then you zip it up. And it's all in here. And this is the mini size. And I don't know if there's a pattern for the mini or she made the sizing up for the mini, but this is my stitching stand or one of them, the metal one, the book stand from Amazon. And this fits inside of here. So I can put that in here. And she also has a um, strap that you can, so basically you can kind of wear it like a shoulder bag. Um, and I also, this is not new from her, but this is a mini running with scissors case. And I have, um, well, it's a little bit of a mess right now. I need to stock this. This has some different things, cross stitch stuff, and this will fit right inside of that bag as well. So I'm considering using this just kind of for my my stitching things that I need and then I'll bring a project bag or two um, like a larger size with my actual stitching in it. So we'll see. I'll, I might film like a little video of what I pack uh, before I leave, but I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> um, I also am in the Fine Floss Club with uh, Fat Quarter Shop and this was the I don't know what month, does it say it on here? Oh, December, this was the December club. Uh, also another, a, a new bow tool from Chantelle at 141 Design. She sent this to me along with a couple other little goodies for Christmas. I found this, I forgot to show it before. Um, I also got my Fanciful Flamingo Favorite Things box. And um, the designer was Emily Call, and this was her pattern. She, there is the DMC floss to go with it. Um, we also got a acrylic um, thread holder, floss keep, 
from Soulful Creations. Um, some Stitchers Lotion, which I need to put in my bag to take with me because my hands have been very dry. Um, a project bag tag. There is a card with the Zoom information. When you buy the box, you get invited to a um, private Zoom with the designer. Um, sticker, which I need to put this in my planner. Some candy, some finishing fabric that our friend Felicia, who is Floss and Blocks, uh, she has an Etsy shop as well. She picked this fabric to go for the finishing. These little wooden snowflakes to go on the pillow. An adorable scissor fob that Alicia made. So cute. And like I said, a little bit of candy. So she packs these boxes full of so many goodies. So if you, I know every, she does them every other month. And after the, so when the next box gets shipped, she will open the following box for new people to join. Um, if you subscribe, you, you don't have to rebuy it again, like resubscribe. It will just automatically bill you. But if you're finding out about it and you want to get in on it, when the next box goes out, so this box shipped in January, I think the next box ships in March, then um, you can get in. I don't know if there's any spots for this next, this upcoming box, but I will link her website below so you can go check and see if there are openings to get the next box if you're interested. And she also has on the website, she has a list of who will be the designers in her upcoming boxes. And I believe the next one is an Easter box and Sweet Wing Studio is a designer. So go check that out. This was a Jingle Ball purchase that came. This is from Teresa Kogut. I did not know the bag was gonna be this big, <laughs> but this is a tote bag with her um, stitchy girl on it. I love it. I might just use it as decor. The bag is giant, but it's so cute. I love this. And I have this um, paint or like the print painting behind me. So I, I love that. Um, and then I also got some linen. This is Vintage Buttercream by Lakeside. I'm hoping you can see the color. Let me hold this up. And this I bought from the Tin Smith's wife in Comfort, Texas, Wendy. This is Vintage Flagstone by Lakeside, 40 count. This is from Colorado Cross Stitcher. This is 40 count Chai by Seraphim. Then I got some more brown sugar from Fiber on a Whim from Fat Quarter Shop. This is what I'm stitching Dasher and Dancer on, and I love that color so much. And then this I bought from Kingsland Needle Art, and it is called Moon Shadow, 40 count, and it's by Seraphim, and I saw somebody stitching on this, and it's so pretty. So Moon Shadow by Seraphim. I highly recommend that color. And let's see. I also, la la, what is it? Oh, I had got some, I got a big piece of Duxbury from a Hollis Hands. I might have shown this last time. And then I also got some Paper Bark, Duxbury and Paper Bark. And the... Color and Cotton Club. Like I said, I might have shown this last time. I don't remember. This is called Mushroom Bold, and I get the 32 count. And this is the color for the Fabric Club. And she, I, I don't know the dates. She, um, Angela from Color and Cotton, she does list the extras 
if there are any on her website um, for the floss and the fabric. And sometimes if you're right there on time, you can get some. Um, otherwise, just be on the lookout for uh, it to pop up on her website. So that is the best I can tell you for that. Um, okay, one more thing I wanted, to, or two things I wanted to talk about. The first thing is um, Sherry with Colorado Cross Stitcher. In her latest video, she talked about her winter stitching camp. And all you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay for anything, sign up for anything. It's free. All you have to do is choose, if you want to participate, is you choose a chart with an animal on it. She said it can be the whole chart. It can be a little teeny bird in the chart, whatever. It just needs to have an animal in the chart. You start it on February 1st, not before and you finish it by February 29th. Um, simply posting the picture on Instagram at the beginning of the month with your chart, the like the front cover of the chart, um, and then you use the hashtags, hashtag winter cross stitch camp 2024, and also hashtag Colorado cross stitcher. And then it's also good if you tag her in your post, do all that with your picture, and that enters you into her winter camp. And that will, at the end of the month, if you finish it, or by the end of the month, if you finish it, you post another picture. To The first post gets you one entry into her giveaways, and if you finish it, that gets you a second entry. And she has all kinds of giveaways. A lot of times she has project bags, chock full with charts and all kinds of stuff. So if you are stitching something that has an animal or you're interested, for free, you can join in with the Cross Stitch Camp, join in posting, and then be entered for the giveaways. And you don't have to pay anything. Um, so check her channel out also. And she was one of the channels mentioned in the article. Um, Colorado Cross Stitcher, and her name is Sherry, and she has a brick and mortar shop as well um, for Winter Cross Stitch Camp. The last thing I want to talk about is this for sure is coming with me on my trip to Michigan. This is one of the pieces that I included in the um, advent box that I sent to Nicole and Chantel for Christmas. And this is the Our Lasting Friendship by Blackbird Designs. So I already owned this and I sent it to both of them. And I'm pretty sure they're also starting it. But I am for sure starting this uh, when we go to Michigan next weekend. This was when I was doing my 24 and 24 video. This was the piece I didn't show that I said was another special start I was going to do that was an exception from my Brenda Gervais starting. I didn't show it because I hadn't gifted it to them yet and I wanted it to be a surprise. So this it will be started next weekend. I have all of the called for colors. I do, however, think, and I'm not 100% sure if these, but I had these from another chart and it has some reds and pinks in it and I'm considering switching a few of them and like adding some of these colors into it. So I will report back next video as to what colors I choose. Um, but I also, this was another part of the advent box that I got them and I will be putting my floss on here. This is from As The You as the yo flies and you are able to create a personalized floss ring tag and i so i sent her this picture of the three of us and then she um i told her i wanted to pick a friendship saying and so she picked this saying for the back so i'm going to put my floss on here to go with my chart and um like i said next this upcoming Friday is when uh, we'll be all getting together for our little um, 
stitching friend retreat getaway at Chantel's um, shop. And we're kind of the guinea pigs for her mini retreats. So I'm sure it will be fun, um, but we're gonna start this together. So I wanted to um, show that. And then if anybody else has this chart and they wanna stitch too, um, it's not officially a stitch along, but we'll be stitching it. And I also, I just thought of this today. I mean, it's appropriate in that we're getting ready to get into February and Valentine's Day and love and friendship and all that. So I thought, well, this really is appropriate for any time, but especially now. Um, so we will be starting that and anyone else who has it and hasn't stitched it. I know a lot of friend groups have stitched it together and in the middle, there's an, a place where you can put initials so I don't know exactly how the middle is going to look yet, but um, you're able to personalize it to however you want. So I wanted to be sure to share that. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Um, as I've said multiple times, I will be going to Michigan. Um, I will be together. Uh, Chantel from 141 Design Company and Nicole with Nicole Spore. And I'm pretty sure we're planning to try to do some type of a video uh, if we have time. So be on the lookout for for some type of a video or pictures or whatever. Um, and I'll be sure to share about our time together when I get back. Um, but I hope you guys are staying warm. Um, it's cold here, but not as cold as other places. Um, it's cold for us in Florida. Uh, but I um, hope you guys are staying warm, getting lots of stitching done, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.